It's your friendly neighborhood laser lady here sitting at my computer because I have found myself with a bit of a problem. I have downloaded a file which has pieces fit together and the material I am using is not quite a match for the file. So I am going to show you how we can alter this in Inkscape, which is a free program. And so all of your projects will just fit together perfectly. So let's dive in the computer. The first thing we're going to need to do is figure out the exact thickness of the material we are using for the project. To do that, we need to cut out a test piece. I know my MDF material claims that it's 1 8 inches thick, approximately 3 millimeters or so, but since the laser is going to obliterate material away in the cutting process, and materials aren't exactly the measurement they say they are, we'll need to try a few different sizes. To get started, I draw out an arbitrary rectangle. Now I will change the size up here in the middle right corner under the W and H. I make sure this lock is in the unlocked position and that it is in the inches setting. I know the decimal for 1 8 inches is 0.125, but we want a snug fit, so let's try a few sizes a bit smaller than that. For this first rectangle, I'm going to make it a half inch wide. That's not for the thickness of the material. It's gonna make a lot more sense soon. For the thickness though, I'm going to do 0.11, which is less than the 0.125. Then I copy and paste it using Control C, Control V, two more rectangles underneath it. For these, I'm going to make them progressively bigger. The middle one, let's make this 0.115 for the thickness. And the last one, let's go 0.125, which you remember is the original claimed thickness of the MDF material I'm going to use. Now I'm going to make a half inch by half inch square that will see which of the rectangles is the perfect fit with. Let me cut everything out and just show you. So now we have our little measurement experiment ready to go. The bottom hole is just too wide at that 0.125. It slips right on through. We don't want that. Now the top hole, the smallest one, the 0.11 is too small and the square won't fit in there at all. And just like baby bear's porridge, the middle hole, the 0.115, is just right. And now we have the measurements we know to alter our laser files to. Now that we know that information, first I'm going to show you how to change the dimensions of an insert. This design came with bases, but the holes are too wide, so let's change them. This object needs to be separated so we can get to that middle rectangle. Let's try to ungroup it by right-clicking the object and clicking on ungroup. If that doesn't work, make sure the object is still selected, go up to path and down to break apart. For me, that made the lines weird and all filled in, so I kept it selected, went down to the white color box with the red X in it to clear out the color, and then held shift while selecting red to make the lines show up again. Now we can alter the dimensions of this long rectangle that the train is going to sit in. I select it and then head up to those dimensions. We're getting pretty used to those now, making sure the lock is in that unlocked position because we don't wanna change the other dimensions of this, I need to adjust the height and not the width. I type in 0.115 or magic number and hit enter. It will adjust the rectangle so our train sits in there just right. You may need to align the shapes for these. I realign them to be perfectly in the middle. I have other Inkscape tutorials that go over that quite a bit. Now I can cut this out and see how snug it is. It's perfect. Okay, that's all well and good when you have a shape fitting into another shape, but what if you have two objects that kind of both have a notch cut out that fits together? First, let's go over what if it's too skinny, and then we'll go over what if it's too wide. Having it be too skinny is the easier problem to have. Now that we know our material thickness is best cut at 0.115, I draw out a long rectangle, again, longer than the length of the notch that we need to alter. Now I make sure the dimensions for the width is that 0.115. I first make sure the top of my rectangle and the notch are in the very same spot, and then I center it up with the align tool. You can find that on your right hand sidebar once you select the align and distribute under the object drop down. Once it's aligned, select the object as well as that rectangle, go up to path and down to difference. 
If by chance that doesn't work, try another function in this menu. It depends on your layer order to which one will work. Chances are the difference one will cut out the rectangle of your material dimensions into the object you had selected along with it. And just like that, it's all ready. Next, let's learn how to alter a notch that is wider than the material we are using. Let's make another rectangle that is longer than the notch and the material width we need in that magical number, 0.115. To make it easier on myself, I made our measuring rectangle another color and then I aligned the top of the rectangle and the notch together the best I could like before. Now I'm going to double click on the object we need to manipulate. This will bring up its nodes. I select and delete all of the nodes leaving our measuring rectangle alone. I make this roundy part straight by selecting the two nodes on the bottom here and I go up to click this line on the top bar and that will flatten it out. Now, much like before, I select the object and the measuring rectangle, go up to path and down to difference. Both circles are now identical and will fit together perfectly with the material I have chosen. Play around with these shapes if you like. You will probably find other ways to achieve the same result. What I am showing you is just one of those ways. That's why I suggest checking out other Inkscape tutorials I have in this playlist. Happy crafting and I'll see you in the next one.